Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, bloggers, business owners, and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke, and this podcast is brought to you by Digital Training Institute. Coming up in today's show, Twitter facilitates longer tweets after the 140 character limit is relaxed. Snapchat rebrands as Snap Inc. and reveals spectacles. Instagram rolls out a save draft feature. I interview Johnny Byrne from Speakific. My shout outs, bloggers unite for the official launch of Irish Blogger Agency. Social media trends you can't ignore. I'll be sharing those at the upcoming Network Ireland Limerick event. And from risk to revolution, will you attend Summit Live UK? My featured column, what is a digital marketing sales funnel anyway? And Slack. The tool that saved my working week. Social media news. If you follow my social media musings, you might be forgiven for thinking that I overshare. I got thinking recently that if you were a hobbyist social media enthusiast, as opposed to a professional social media practitioner, the content type and frequency will differ radically. Social media is business to me as well as a hobby. However, both are interlinked. Now that we have that all cleared up, let's see what's happening in social media news. As always, there's lots. Twitter now lets us post longer tweets after their 140 character limit was relaxed. So we can say even more in a tweet given that photos, GIFs, polls and quote tweets no longer count toward the 140 characters. Did you know that Twitter's original 140 character limit was created to be in line with the 160 characters of text messages. Be careful though, embedding an image or video hosted elsewhere rather than being uploaded through Twitter, such as a YouTube video, will still count towards the character limit. So let's get tweeting together. I'm at Tweets by JSB. Snapchat has rebranded as Snap Inc and has revealed spectacles. I am very excited by Snapchat. They are rocking the social media dance floor with their raft of new developments. So they have rebranded to Snap Inc. It even sounds cool. Snapchat is entering the product marketplace and Spectacles is their first. Spectacles are a pair of video camera equipped sunglasses and ladies, they come in three colors, coral, teal and black. The $129 shades, which are apparently coming soon, will let Snapchat's 150 million daily users shoot 10 second videos to upload to the app. Lights on the front of the device will flash to indicate it's recording. I have to say, I really like the design and I might just be purchasing myself a pair and teal. Jump over to my blog, digitaltraining.ie, to see them for yourself and also a video of how they work. Instagram has rolled out the save draft feature finally. How often have you started an Instagram post only to be distracted or to get a call and when you go back you've either deleted it or it's published mid post? Well this should no longer happen as Instagram has given us the save draft option by simply hitting the back arrow in the upper left corner of the screen. The save draft prompt will appear. You can reopen it later within library under the drafts designation. Happy Insta saving. Interview. In this week's show, I'm joined by Johnny Byrne, co-founder of Speakific, the platform where event organizers and speakers connect. Johnny, you are very welcome to JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks very much, Joanne. So first of all, tell us, how did the idea come around for Speakific? Well, I've been running two business networks for over five years, and there were monthly network meetings. So every month I needed two speakers, and we didn't necessarily have huge budgets for the speakers. So um, it, was, it was from that I said there's probably or bound to be a, a better way than calling around local enterprise offices and various other places. Um, so I couldn't really find a better way bar just, uh, I guess, having a thrall through LinkedIn and then 
there was no real way of knowing, you know, how much speaking experience they had, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it came from that. How would you sum up the speaking circuit in Ireland? Is it competitive, and would you describe it as mature compared to the UK or to the US? I'd say it's relatively mature and somewhat competitive. Um, it wouldn't be as mature as the UK or the US, and I think the main reason for that is it's just difficult to find good speakers. So that's really the problem we're trying to solve. I think there, w- there would be more events if it was easier to find good speakers. And um, if you can find good speakers, there would be more events, and then that would make it more competitive. But yes, definitely in the UK, the standard uh, and in the US is, is quite high. But again, with the population comes the demand, and with the demand comes, I guess, the, uh, the demand for quality. So. so public speaking is a skill in itself, and I know how difficult it can be, as I do quite a bit of it myself. In your view and in your experience, what does an event organiser look for in a speaker? What are the key attributes of a great public speaker? Well, I've heard a lot of people say in the event circuit that they look for the, the three E's, if you like, for the speaker to entertain, empower and educate. So really that's what they're looking for and uh, they look for past experience. They they look for where they've spoken before, the size of the event, um, the nature of the event um, and how they were received by doing the research. But they will be the three key things that uh, they will be looking for, irrespective of the, the length of the talk, as I say, is to educate, empower and entertain. And, uh, you know, the, the events I go to and the ones I speak at, um, yeah, they always look for um, the, the speaker to, to, to get the audience engaged, obviously, uh, get a bit of a laugh going, but obviously to, to share their, their expertise and their experience. Do you think anyone can become a public speaker? So... If you're knowledgeable about a particular topic or you're an up and coming influencer in your industry, how do you then get on the speaking circuit? Um, I guess you just have to start small. It's almost like uh, starting a band. You play in a few small venues uh, to small numbers, uh, fail fast and fail cheaply and and learn fast um, and go from there. But yeah, it definitely takes a lot of practice. I suppose one place to start is if there's a local business network or if there isn't then to join Toastmasters where as I say you can learn a lot quite quickly and um, it has no direct consequences on your position as an expert because you're talking to other people who are trying to become um, public speakers and better at uh, professional public speaking so I wouldn't recommend that you know you, you put yourself forward for a big gig where there's going to be people who you want to convince to buy your book or to engage with you with, with your professional products or services. So uh, either Toastmasters or small local events and, and uh, do as much training and as much practice, well, definitely as much practice as possible. And it's also worth looking at some, some courses. And obviously to go to events um, and see what you liked and didn't like about particular speakers and also to stick to your own style and not to necessarily try to mirror somebody that you might not necessarily become. So it's important to be true to the audience by being true to yourself. And uh, we are looking with Speakific, at uh, setting up the Speakific Academy, where there'll be a series of online courses. And some of those will be direct related to public and professional speaking from some Speakific users who are uh, professionals and have a lot of experience at this stage. Some great tips. I know myself when I'm going to events, that's one thing I do. I actually study the body language, the delivery and the content of the speakers on the stage. So it's a really great learning tool. Now, paid speaking gigs versus non-paid speaking gigs. It's always, you know, a big question. Should you do it if you're not getting paid? Absolutely. You shouldn't do all of them uh, if you're not getting paid. It really depends on who's in the audience and what the potential is for uh, indirect um, selling, if you like, or indirect revenue. So people categorize professional speakers as people who always get paid for it, and public speakers are people who don't necessarily always get paid for it. Having said that, I know professional speakers who will speak for free. They will say what their fee is normally, but they will speak for free if they're given the opportunity to mention their latest book or if they have an online course or if they have a bigger event coming up that's a paid event. So sometimes, you know, where that's allowed 
you can make more from um, what you sell at the event, if you like, the upsell from stage than you would if you were getting paid to talk. So it really depends on who's in the room and what's the potential to monetize that um, if you're speaking for free. Of course, if you're new to the circuit, it's going to be somewhat difficult to charge. Um, or if you want to grow your profile through speaking, again, if you haven't done much of it before, but you've convinced the event organizer that you're the person to speak, it can be hard to command um, any any big fees or, or any fees over and above, potentially just uh, mileage expenses, if you like, or possibly accommodation. So I've done plenty of paid and I've done just as many free, um, but I always have that caveat that I'm talking for free. I'm definitely going to mention um, products that I have a little bit more than if I was getting paid. You're also helping speakers turn knowledge into products as part of your business offering. So how does this work? So there's a lot of people in the uh, in, in Speakific that that have kind of categorized, if you like, with the abbreviation stack. So they're either speakers, trainers, authors, coaches, or knowledge brokers. And really, they're ideal candidates who have a lot of knowledge and experience, and they can turn that into a digital product. And I have a lot of background, as you know, in uh, online course creation and e-learning. So uh, it's to take that my expertise and to help them um, as speakers make more money from their expertise by turning that expertise into an online sellable um, online course. And uh, we have a number of workshops, both online and offline, and webinars coming out. And it's all part of the academy. So the academy, as I say, will have courses on how to be a better speaker, but it will also have courses on how to create digital products and online courses from your expertise and ultimately create a second income from your expertise. Maybe a second income even more than what you're getting from the speaking circuit? Well, potentially. I mean, you know, there's speakers on Speakific who talk to uh, or talk in front of hundreds of people. And if they have, um, you know, a high quality online course that retails from anything from 95 euro to 195 euro, and they may have a particular discount for the audience on that day. And, you know, even if, you know, a small percentage um, take up on the offer for the online course, and of course you don't have to go back and deliver it because it's pre-recorded and online, you, you could actually make a lot more from the sale of the, co the, sale of the courses than you would for, for getting paid. So you could have a nice little, um, you know, two, two paychecks basically out of the one speaking gig. Finally, Johnny, give us three digital marketing tips for seasoned public speakers to help them attract more speaking opportunities. Because, as you said, you have a, um, a a broad background in digital marketing. Yeah, I suppose three tips for speakers would definitely, um, you know, obviously be on social media quite actively. Probably um, Facebook and, and Twitter definitely be, you know, once you're, once you're booked, um, always be engaged with the Twitter audience uh, around the event and the hashtags that go with that particular event. And don't be afraid on Facebook uh, to put it out there as well. Of course, blogging is critical as well. I mean, share your expertise. The best way to build profile online is to uh, you know, use education-based marketing. So as speakers typically, uh, as you know, Joanne, which you are an expert in digital marketing, um, Speakers tend to be, you know, have a lot of expertise. So share that expertise on a blog, share that blog content out on Facebook and Twitter and, and LinkedIn, and really let people know you're, you're a specialist and an expert in a particular area. And that, in turn, will get you more gigs. And, of course, you have to uh, do lots and lots of video. So I would be suggesting, even if it's a two-second or two-minute video, to do it every week where it's Facebook Live or pre-recorded or set up your YouTube channel. But you do have to get yourself out there so that you're going to get these speaking gigs and then from there uh, potentially upsell uh, in front of the audience. Fantastic. If you want to find out more about Speakific, log on to speakific.com. And if you're a speaker, you can sign up there for free. Thanks for joining me on today's show, Johnny. I'll also share your social networks on my blog associated with this podcast. Great, Ron. Thanks very much. Shoutouts. 
In this part of the show, I give shout outs to those who are remarkable online and worth talking about. I had the most wonderful day recently, hanging out with bubbly bloggers who mean business. Sinead Carroll, who has been on this podcast previously, launched Irish Blogger Agency to a room full of hungry bloggers in Dublin's Doubletree by Hilton Hotel. The agency will connect brands and bloggers and elevate the blogging industry in Ireland. If you are a blogger and hungry for paid work, hungry to learn, hungry to be better at blogging and hungry to be part of a new movement of professional bloggers, then register now at irishbloggeragency.com. Membership just costs €50 for a full year. I am part of the Blogging Academy Power Team and will deliver three one-day workshops across Ireland in online public relations, blogging for business and intermediate social media strategy. You can register your interest for those workshops now, also at irishbloggeragency.com. Read my blog post about the launch event on digitaltraining.ie. Social media trends you can't ignore. I'll be sharing those at the upcoming Network Ireland Limerick event. I also have three free tickets to that event, so simply tag me in a post on the Digital Training Institute Facebook page, tweet me to Tweets by JSB, or snap me to JSB Snaps, and tell me what you want to learn about social media, and you might just get one or more of those tickets to come along. The event is an open event and takes place on October 12th in the Savoy Hotel in Limerick from 6 until 8.30pm. Finally, Summit Live UK has announced their 2017 dates. The event is billed as From Risk to Revolution in the Live Video, Live Social Video and Live Streaming Space. It takes place in London from March 27th to 29th in London Science Museum and you can find out more at summitlive.co.uk. JSB's column. What is a digital marketing funnel anyway? I talk a lot about digital marketing funnels, so I thought I should explain what I actually mean by it. Put simply, a digital marketing funnel is how companies attract, convert and retain customers via the web. We are all engaged in digital marketing activities and busy pushing out social media marketing messages. But are we actually capturing the data trail of those who are engaging with their brand and are we remarketing to them? Well, the funnel model will help you perfect this. Your funnel shaped like a pyramid will have three parts. Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. The top portion of the digital marketing funnel represents the first interactions your customers will have with your brand. In today's world, those interactions could come from a variety of sources, such as organic search results, social media, email marketing, or paid advertising. In the middle of the funnel, potential leads are moving forward from a first interaction towards a sale, or possibly a subsequent sale, depending on their experience with your brand thus far. The part of the funnel doesn't focus on first or last clicks, but instead looks broadly at the channels to see which ones are driving the most conversions, regardless of their place in the funnel. The bottom of the funnel, then, is the last digital touch point before someone makes a purchase. These channels are of the utmost importance because they allow you to build your strategy from the bottom up. You will use Google Analytics to track customers at different stages of the digital marketing funnel. You will also create content aimed at those customers at different stages of brand engagement, from awareness to sales prospect. Marry the customer data, the content, and the technical infrastructure, and you have a digital marketing sales funnel. If you need a funnel built for your business, then get in touch. Email joanne at digitaltraining.ie. Social media of the week. I project manage client work at Digital Training Institute and so spend lots of my time briefing and directing my team. We are also spread all over the world, in different time zones and in different countries, so project management is very important. To reduce death by email, we use an app called Slack, which is some great functionality and it saved my working week this week. The Slack founder describes the app in two ways. Firstly, it's all your communication in one place, 
instantly searchable and available wherever you go. Secondly, from a marketing viewpoint, they describe it as a messaging and search platform that creates a single unified archive accessible through powerful search. Slack has great integrations for social media managers with Twitter, Hootsuite, Blog RSS feeds, Giphy, Dropbox, Google Analytics, MailChimp and many, many more. So be less busy, log on to slack.com to find out for yourself. Thanks as always for tuning into JSB Talks Digital. I'm getting regular feedback about my podcast, which is now four months old, and I love getting feedback. So please send me some. As always, go to digitaltraining.ie to get links to everything discussed on today's show. If you're interested in becoming a guest on JSB Talks Digital or have an event you want to promote, drop me an email to joanne at digitaltraining.ie and write podcast in the subject line. If there's a topic you want me to cover, please tweet me at Tweets by JSB or snap JSB Snaps. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke. This has been JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. JSB Talks Digital. Digital.